Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we're joined by Enzo Compagnoni, who is the Regional Vice President and General Manager of Red Hat ANZ. Red Hat delivers hardened open source solutions that make it easier for enterprises to work across platforms and environments, from the core data center to the network edge. By operating transparently and responsibly, Red Hat continues to be a catalyst in open source communities, helping you build flexible, powerful IT infrastructure solutions. Enzo joins us today to tell us more about Red Hat and his thoughts on open hybrid cloud. Thank you for coming along, Enzo, and welcome to the jam. Uh, thanks very much, Tom. Uh, nice, nice to be here on your show. Thank you very much. Uh, well, let's get straight into it. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about Red Hat and its products and solutions? Sure. Okay. Um, obviously, you touched on some, some, some key things there in, in, in your opening, right? We, we are a company that has delivered over time, you know, hardened open source solutions. Um, a lot of your listeners would probably know us from the early days of uh, when we re revolutionized the operating system with Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Um, we, we call it RHEL, uh, and most do. And RHEL still is the world leading enterprise Linux platform solution. Um, and it's certified on all the major clouds and with thousands of hardware and software vendors. So that hasn't changed, right? And it keeps evolving and growing. But really when we look at now Red Hat, we kind of focus on key, three key main areas. Really, we've got hybrid cloud infrastructure, cloud native applications, and automation and orchestration solutions. And really, we deliver robust platforms in all three of those areas to help our customers solve key business problems. Um, what hasn't changed and what we've been doing for a long time is we still harness the, the innovative power of open source, um, but deliver it in a way that's enterprise ready for our customers. And, and it's kind of a key thing. So, uh, you know, not just the, the open source community, but really hardening and making it kind of ready to consume at the scale that most of our customers do. Um, and as you probably, I'm sure you're, you're well aware, a lot of the main sources of innovation has really come from the open source community over recent years, both in technology innovation and business innovation. And what we're seeing a lot is the customers leveraging, you know, the benefits of that open source platforms so they can focus really on what they do best, which is all of the innovation on top of those platforms that deliver the products and services they need to deliver to their customers, right? So that's really how we've evolved a lot from the very early days of just rail to really our, our very broad portfolio that we now deliver for so many customers across the globe. Well, now it's been a little over six months since you took over the GM role for uh, Red Hat and ANZ. Uh, how's, how's it been so far and what have been your strategic priorities locally? Well, Tom, I think the last six months have been pretty intense, right? I can't say I've had a lot of, uh, a lot of spare time, but they've been fantastic, right? Really fantastic. I've, um, I've had a real chance to get a much deeper understanding of both internally the Red Hat business across, across the board, but more importantly, spending a lot of time with our customers and partners. Like as I said to you at the beginning, I'm, I'm currently here in Canberra, but I've been traveling all around um, the country, Australia and New Zealand, spending time with the customers and partners, and also doing it virtually as well. And we're now in this total hybrid world. Um, and it's been good to really hear from them because they're, they're dealing with a lot of conflicting challenges coming at them from all over the place um, while they're balancing that to deliver the business success they need to deliver. Like what I'm really hearing a lot of is you know, they're dealing with all the increased complexity. You know, we hear in the press all the changing market dynamics, inflation, cost of living, cost pressures that's hitting the companies. Um, skills gap, which is, you know, it's, it's prevalent in the technology sector, but also in our customer sector. And especially in Australia, where we had the borders closed for so long, it just exacerbated an existing problem that we already had. Um, as well as that, you know, for various reasons, many of the industries and verticals that we deal with have really had, you know, an increase in law of the regulatory and compliance requirements. The customers are getting all that while at the same time, they're being asked to look at keeping sustainability in mind while delivering all that and delivering, you know, world best in class product and services to their customers. That's a lot going on for, for the com companies to navigate and work through. So really for for me and for the company, for Red Hat, we continue to be focused really on helping these companies leverage the open source technology, the innovation that it can provide for them, while at the same time helping them reduce cost. That's kind of a key thing that really I'm seeing a lot of the, I'm sure you're hearing as well, is a constant pressure that's, that's coming at them. So helping them remain competitive, flexible and adaptable 
while really maintaining all the security and regulatory compliance that they need to, to do, right? Um, what we noticed what, you know, coming out of the pandemic was obviously a lot of the companies had to accelerate their digital transformation efforts as they kind of settled into new ways of operating either you know, widespread adoption of cloud technologies was something they really had to accelerate and grow a lot more, right? Um, I recently read a report, uh, I'm trying to think, it was the um, Global Data Report and the Forecast, and it shows that Australian enterprises are effectively looking to invest um, about $20 billion in cloud com computing technology by 2025, which is a massive growth in spend in that area, right? Well, now, as you mentioned, businesses are accelerating their adoption of cloud, and the Red Hat is a strong proponent of open hybrid cloud. What is Red Hat's approach to the hybrid cloud, and how does Red Hat bring its open source development model into the strategy? Yeah, th thanks for asking, Tom. I mean, look, we've been talking about hybrid cloud for a lot longer than, you know, when it's now become much more popular and trendy to talk about. We're one of the early proponents of hybrid. And, Look, there was a recent, the, the Global Tech Outlook report in 2023 talked about that really hybrid has emerged as the most commonly used cloud strategy. And at Red Hat, we believe that an open hybrid cloud really provides the flexibility and openness that's needed for both the mix of different workloads and the change in business needs. I mean, if you think about it, even with the recent workloads and everything around, say, AI, there are elements of the AI workloads that really lend themselves very well to be closer to the data. So inside the, the data center itself. And there's some elements that you that really lend itself to be you know, out in the cloud or right through to the edge in terms of delivering that. So, so really it's, it's a belief that hybrid cloud is there to adapt to the needs of the business. And really with hybrid cloud, we talk about having that immediate computing environment where, where the, you can use it across public, private, on-prem, cloud or edge, um, and, and the open hybrid cloud enables that innovation. This is why, Tom, it's really kind of important at Red Hat we strongly believe that you know, openness is, is not just a secret to success, but it's kind of the reason for it, right? You know, we believe that you know, open source is more than just code, better principles, better culture, um, creates better technology. And transformation success really begins with, with sharing, right? Sharing the things that didn't work, sharing the mistakes, the stumbles as you're going to new areas. And that's very much in the DNA of where open source has come from, about sharing mistakes, learning from it, and you end up with, a better outcome uh, for everybody. If I can give you a little bit of a local example, and, I, and I'm happy to share this because it's it's, it's now public information, but um, we deal with the Suncorp Group, and they were really looking to change, um, respond to a lot of the changing business needs that they were facing, and through the adoption of a Red Hat Open Hybrid Cloud Solutions, they prioritize the delivery of really digital first experiences for their customers as part of kind of an effort to really modernize the technologies and drive further growth. In trying to create these, um, Suncorp needed a, a reliable multi-cloud development platform. And I remember when we first started working with them, they started modernizing key applications really on premise. Uh, one of the early ones they did was a pricing application called Cape. And they used Red Hat OpenShift um, to modernize it and give them a much better service to their customers by doing this. But later, as inevitably happens, their business needs change. And, you know, I, I'm sure if, if, you, if your viewers, you know, look it up, they, they basically made a decision that they were going to get out of the data center uh, footprint by 2025. And so all of a sudden, they had to kind of take some of those workloads that had been modernized on premise and take it out to the cloud. And we helped them by providing them really our as a service version of OpenShift, um, one for Microsoft and one for AWS to allow them to take those and deliver it. Those are, it's, it's, a, it's a long name for them, but like everything in, in IT, we have acronyms. So it's Red Hat OpenShift Service on AWS, but of course we call it ROSA. Every good, every, every good IT thing needs to have an acronym. Very nice, and very for, nice. And for, and, for, and for Microsoft, we've got Microsoft as your Red Hat OpenShift or Arrow for short, right? So the, these are jointly developed and managed solutions with both AWS and Microsoft that helped Suncorp move these workloads out into the cloud quickly and meet their changing business needs. And again, hybrid allowed them to do that, right? So it gave them application portability. And what one of their senior leaders spoke about uh, publicly was, it also gave them contestability. So they could actually have, you know, um, you know, cost efficiencies and could compete across various areas. So back to my point really is that 
Red Hat's open high cloud strategy, supported by our open source technologies and fundamentals, brings a consistent foundation to any cloud deployment, whether it's public, private, hybrid, or, or multi-cloud. Well, now you previously mentioned that organizations are trying to do more with less, as well as dealing with their skill shortages. Uh, how can these organizations make the most of their hybrid cloud investment? Well, I think I think what's pivotal to that and what I've seen um, is really through through automation, Tom. I mean, look, it's it's been kind of a center with the with the amount of work that needs to be done there, automation becomes integral to cloud computing, um, especially with the challenges of trying to do more with less. And look, it's nothing new. You know, automation has been a major force reshaping work for long before the pandemic. It's just taking an increased urgency now in recent times. And you know, that urgency has come in the context of business risk and resiliency. I think there's been few other technologies that impact transformation across the organization the way that automation can, right? It improves security and compliance gaps, abstracts away complex tasks, and helps standardization across the organization. It enables the organization to scale um, and allow them to kind of, in an in a operationally complex world, simplify things. So I don't see automation, I see as a means of, you know, when we talked about skill shortage and the demands of doing more with less, you got a lot of overburdened, overworked staff out there. It gives them a chance to regain control. If you, if you automate some of those repetitive tasks, including the management of platforms, all that time is given back to staff and they can focus on the bit that customers want them to do or companies want them to do, which is innovative work. And so that helps with that challenge. Additionally, what I'm seeing a lot of companies out there, if they haven't been forced to reduce headcount, some of them aren't getting increased you know, people on board, but they still got increasing workloads and, and tasks they need to do. So this is a way of delivering more with the same amount of staff as well. So Red Hat's Ansible automation platform is really an end-to-end -end platform to configure systems, deploy software, and orchestrating the advanced workflows. Um, it includes resources to like create, manage, and scale across the entire enterprise. I don't know, I know, I know Tom, you were, um, you did a bit of a virtual connection for our summit event, but one of the exciting, um, Shane, you couldn't be there in person. Maybe I'll be able to host you in a future time. Maybe, um, maybe. But one of the, maybe. One of the exciting uh, uh, announcements was event-driven Ansible, which is the evolution of Ansible. And really, this is where we connect infrastructure and, and application observability tools with really an enterprise-grade um, automation product like Ansible. So when event-driven Ansible kind of receives an event notification from a third-party tool, it determines what's the next step and acts accordingly. So it kind of allows the IT teams to predetermine, define rules, initiate an automated response for situations, um, like an unresponsive system process or an unauthorized access. So when you think about it, in essence, event-driven Ansible is like that team member that basically never goes home. It augments your, your staff and team to deliver that. And so therefore automation becomes key to do more with less, uh, Tom. Well, now I guess as one final question, Red Hat has an extensive ecosystem of partners. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about that? Sure, I mean, look, we wouldn't be where we are today without our partner ecosystem. It's, they've been a key multiplier to our success. I mean, it's intrinsic in the way we've evolved as a company. I mean, our, you know, just by the nature of open source, it's very much an ecosystem play and a partner play. Um, so they play a key role, key role for us in enabling all of our customer success. Um, and our customers have, you know, our partners have super close relationship with our customers and they have some really unique domain expertise either through verticals or through particular areas. And so they play a key role in developing those relationships. They help us combine our technology with theirs and also other partners. And when we bring this together, to solve kind of the customer's complex business problems, we kind of call it this co-creation. And this ends up creating very powerful solutions and really successful business outcomes for our customers. Um, and because of that collaboration, really draws on a lot of the fundamental open source principles that are really in our, in our DNA. Um, I mentioned a little bit about the verticalization piece. That's a key part. I mean, if you think about it, some verticals, you know, if you think about health, financial services, telco, have some really domain specific requirements that some of our partners are very well 
um, suited and capable and have deep expertise around. Like if you take the example of uh, telecommunications and you know you look to the future and what 5G is enabling, um, some of the, the, the network equipment providers or the NEPs are working with our partners to kind of build these infrastructure solutions to deliver the speed and power to support the mobile development. Uh, I'm not sure if you've seen a recent announcement, uh, it was only in the last couple of weeks, on the deep partnership we just announced with Nokia. This is one of these, it's not just a, a, a very generic partnership, this is a really intimate, comprehensive partnership with a high degree of mutual commitment to the point that we've taken quite a few of the Nokia people and they're going to actually become Red Hatters. They're going to come into Red Hat to make this happen. So really the idea is to tightly integrate Nokia's core network applications and their competency with a cloud-friendly platform like Red Hat OpenStack platform or Red Hat OpenShift. And what this really does, it brings kind of the best of both companies jointly um, to our customers in deploying 5G. And so what we've seen, and especially in the recent past, Tom, is that if it's taught us anything, is that things can change really quickly. And what we've seen in business is with both our partners and our customers over the course of the past few years is that we are most successful when we really stay close to the relationships that matter most. Well, it has been a pleasure having you on the jam, Enzo, and learning more about Red Hat and Open Hybrid Cloud. Uh, we look forward to hearing more from Red Hat very soon. Thank you so much, Tom. Much, Tom, much, much appreciated.